Hi, welcome to the tie chest. Today we're talking about how to date a pair of vintage cufflinks. More specifically, we'll be taking a closer look at how a cufflink is made in order to determine its approximate age. Cufflinks became in vogue near the end of the 19th century. They were worn by both men and women. They were constructed in several different ways, as you can see in these old catalog entries. Many are two separate pieces attached by a bar, which could be oblong, S-shaped, or crisscrossed. There are also cufflinks shaped like barbells in one solid piece. Others have a bean or ball back piece. Here's an example of an S-shaped rod holding two separate pieces together. Here's an example of barbell shaped Victorian cufflinks. Here's an example of a ball back pair of cufflinks where the backside is literally shaped like a ball. Another style found in both Victorian and Edwardian times is the cuff or sleeve button. These acted like cufflinks but had more of a button style. Here's an example of a pair of cuff buttons. As you can see, um, there's a lever mechanism on the back. In the Edwardian period, the beanback cufflinks are increasingly popular. Here are some examples. A notable difference between Victorian and Edwardian cufflinks are the fact that the back ends of the cufflinks are much simpler in the Edwardian era. In the late 1800s, the back piece was often much more detailed and ornate, whereas in the 1900s, the backs are much simpler, often with no design at all. The following decade doesn't show much change in the cufflink area. With the advent of the First World War, adorning oneself with exquisite jewelry wasn't exactly a priority. The 1920s saw very interesting developments. The most important was probably the creation of the snap style cufflink, which truly defined the cufflinks of the 1920s. In 1924, Bayer and Wilde, who later became Swank, developed their own version of snaplings called come aparts. As you can see in these old ads, they came with a lifetime guarantee that would actually outlive you. Until this day, come apart cufflinks are highly desirable by collectors. The snap style cufflink will continue until the 1930s. In the 1920s, we also see more and more lever back cufflinks, such as these. We also see cufflinks with bridge connections connecting two separate pieces, such as these. Here's an interesting design patented in 1927 by the Foster Company. One end of the cufflink swivels and the other is stationary. During the Great Depression of the 1930s, cufflinks naturally decreased in popularity. Jewelry in general was, once again, not high on the priority list. One interesting style of cufflink emerged very briefly during this decade. This unique style was patented by the Dolan and Bullock Company in 1934. Because the style did not last very long, cufflinks with this particular construction and much, are much more scarce and thus highly collectible as a result. Another peculiar development was these super cool retractable cufflinks developed in England and patented in 1937. These cufflinks were held by a chain that actually pulls out and retracts to ensure a snug fit. How cool is that? Surprisingly, the 1930s were an important decade for cufflink history. During the second half of the decade, big time jewelry companies were busy patenting the ever popular toggle mechanism, which is still the main type used on cufflinks today. As you can see in this list, the big names in men's jewelry were starting their engines for the biggest resurgence in men's jewelry, which would happen in the 1940s and 1950s. Each company invented their own unique twist on the general toggle idea. Here's a style popularized by Hickok and found on many vintage Hickok cufflinks. Here's a style by Hadley. Here's a style by Clements. As a result of all these toggle developments, the 1940s cufflinks were almost exclusively the toggle type. Here are some examples. However, there was one other kind of cufflink that made a brief resurgence. The chain link cufflink has its roots in the beginning of cufflink history, where two buttons would be linked together to hold the cuffs, hence the name cufflink. So how do I know these particular chain links don't date back to the 1800s? That's right, the Queen Elizabeth ship was only launched for the first time in 1938. The toggle continued its popularity into the 1950s. 
big jewelry companies were constantly perfecting their designs and construction. This particular style, patented in 1949 and issued to Jacob Oldak, is found on many vintage cufflinks. I'm not sure which company he represents, so if anyone knows, please let me know. This style is defined by the trapezoid shape of the toggle bar. Another big name in vintage, cuff vintage cufflinks is, without a doubt, Swank. In studying Swank advertisements, I came across an interesting discovery. Swank cufflinks in vintage ads dating up to 1954 have a rectangular shaped toggle. The cufflinks in the ads from 1955 and later have more of a rounded bullet shaped toggle. This could help in dating vintage, vintage Swank cufflinks. In 1956, Forstner, another big name in vintage jewelry, developed another type of toggle which is characterized by more of an oval shape, as in this example. Another important patent is this one. It's found on many vintage cufflinks and was issued in 1961 to Joseph Bastano. Again, I'm not sure which company he represented, so if anyone knows, please fill me in. Note the toggle shape here, flat on the underside and rounded on the top. What's most interesting about this patent is that it was actually filed in 1956, meaning that the cufflinks produced between 1956 and 1961 would be marked patent pending, as in this example on the right. Not much happened development-wise to cufflinks in the 1960s, but the last distinct style that emerged, again for a brief decade or so, is the wraparound mesh style cufflink. These are often big and chunky with colorful stones mirroring the current big and bold fashion styles of the 60s and 70s. So with all this information under our belt, we're all experts, right? Well, not really. The information gathered by studying patents is absolutely invaluable and accurate. However, there's one golden rule for dating any type of jewelry using patents. The patent issue date indicates the earliest a piece would have been made. The actual date of manufacture could be any time after the patent issue date. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you love cufflinks like I do, I invite you to visit us at thetiechest.com. We carry a great selection of vintage cufflinks, among other pieces of men's jewelry and neckties. We ship our cufflinks in a brand new cardboard jewelry box lined with a soft, non-tarnishing fiber insert perfect for storage or to give as a gift, and we also ship free. You can find us both on eBay and Etsy. Visit our website for the direct link to both, both of those shops. We also invite you to connect with us. Find us on your favorite social media site and come say hi. We'd love to meet you. If this, if this video was useful to you, we'd appreciate a thumbs up below. Thanks for watching.